On Saturday, St. John's knocked off Hofstra 84-79 at UBS Arena. And then Johnny's head coach, Rick Pitino, he made a surprise announcement. So let's talk some basketball on the side of the Johnnies. And we're going to do it with my guy who's plugged in with college hoops as anybody. That is Zach Brazilla who joins me now. Zach, what's going on? What's up, man? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Talking some college basketball before we ring in 2024. And, Zach, following Saturday's win, Patino said that next year he plans to play UConn at Carnesecca Arena rather than at the Garden. Playing Connecticut is a high-profile league game. So why the switch, and do you think there's value in the game being played on campus? Look, I, it's a long way to go. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold they're actually going to play this game at Carnesecca. Um, the, there is a league policy that says the league gets to determine where the highest profile games are. I think this was just kind of a way for Rick Pitino to tweak UConn a little, just played a tough game out there. Um, and, and I think the other thing is he's kind of realized early on here that Karnasek is a really good home court advantage. We all know it's a tiny gym. It's only about, you know, around 6,000, but it, it, the amenities aren't great. We all know that, but it's a really good home court advantage. And I think he's kind of starting to realize the value of that. Look, we all know Rick loves the guard and they're going to play a lot of games at the guard and they're playing eight there this year. I expect them to play eight or even more there next year. Um, I'm not sold this game will be a car Saka, even though he was pretty firm about that. Um, but I do think this is kind of a way to tweak, tweak UConn a little bit. And look, there's clearly a burgeoning rivalry between these two teams. I don't think there's any question about that. Okay, so I'm here for the tweaking. I like all that. That's good. You're not taking it serious, although he said that he was serious. And, Zach, he also talked about St. John's losing the brand and building the brand back. We know building the brand back is more than just where the games are played, but do you believe that St. John's is on its way to having the fan interest on the level of a UConn or a Villanova? Are they on that trajectory right now? You know, it's way too early to say. Um, this pro is a program that hasn't won a tournament game since 2000, that hasn't been in the main draw of the tournament since 2015. Uh, there's a long way to go. Look, Brady Rick Pitino clearly has added excitement, buzz, interest. There's no doubt. I mean, it's, it's a program very unlike what I've covered for the last decade. It's very different. But there is a long way to go here. You know, they... They played at Barclays Center against Boston College. It was not a good crowd. They had about 7,500 yesterday at UBS Arena for Hofstra. They have sold out some games at Karnaseka. The Garden game uh, against Michigan had a decent crowd. Fordham was okay. I think it was around 10,000. Um, you know, it, the crowds haven't been quite as good as I expected, but you got to understand that it's been like two decades of mostly irrelevance with this program. So it's going to take winning. We all know New York City is a front runner town. St. John's becomes a top, a perennial top twenty-five team. Is making the tournament. Is winning tournament games. All of a sudden, you're going to see a ton of St. John's fans, you know, coming out of the woodwork. Right now, I think there's kind of a wait and see approach. It's, you know, through the non-conference, been kind of up and down. They're a team I think that will make the tournament. I feel like they are getting better. And you know, you win some big games, and all of a sudden, you're going to see some big crowds. I, I think it's like any other, you know, sport. In, in New York City, you know, people love a winner, and St. John's got to prove it's a winner again. Even though they have the legendary coach, you still got to show results. Yeah, it's all about getting those W's. If you get those W's, the people will come. I do agree with that. Last thing for me, Zach, the Johnnies, they ended their non-conference play this season with a five-point win over Hofstra, as I mentioned at the top. As St. John's embarks into full Big East play, what are you keeping your eye on with the squad over the next few months? It's like it's consistency, it's defense. Um, that Boston College game really felt like a low point. They, they really didn't show up. They, they were really bad defensively. They responded by, you know, shutting down Fordham, beating Xavier Handley, nearly winning at UConn. You know, they, they didn't play great against Hofstra, although I think Hofstra is a quality team. Hofstra really shoots the three well. Joel Soriano had a rare off night. Chris Ludlam was out with an ankle injury. You know, they're working R.J. Luis back in. He's really been a bright spot when he's been out there. So, look, I do think the team is on the upward swing. January 2nd, they're home for Butler. Then they go to Villanova. Then they get Providence at home. Then they go to Creighton. So, look, they got plenty of opportunities to really improve that resume and, and show people that they're a tournament team. Um, it's not always a straight line, you know, of progress. 
So they had, you know, to me, they, they really made progress defensively against Fordham, Xavier, and UConn. Maybe took a little step back in Tofstra. But I also think it's really hard to go from league play back to non-conference where you're really expected to blow the other team out. It's just hard to match that intensity. So I, I wouldn't go nuts on them not playing a great game against Hofstra. They won the game. That's all that matters. And I'm really interested to see how they do now that we're getting into the heart of Big East play. I think there's optimism Chris Ledlow will be back uh, against Butler on Tuesday, and old friend Pasha Alexander is coming to town. It should be uh, it should be a fun night. Yeah, it should be a fun night. Should be a fun rest of the Big E season for the Johnnies. We will see how they do as they aim to be a tournament team in 2024. That is Zach Braziller of the New York Post. Does a great job covering college sports and the St. John's Red Storm. Zach, thank you for the time. Happy New Year, my man. Happy New Year, buddy. Have a good one. Thank you.